So right now we're going to start off the sweep single series, and the first thing we're going to do is just get into the basics of the sweep single. So I got Levi here, we can actually do it this way. So with the sweep single, I want to go for a leg that I'm comfortable attacking, and for me that's always the right leg with the sweep single. So if my opponent puts that right leg in front, nah, the sweep single is there. So what I like to do to first get into the sweep single, especially for beginners, is to actually show them this way. And this is something you're gonna do the first few reps you do this, but once you get comfortable, then I'll show you the other way. So the first method of doing the sweep single is, I'm here in my stance. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put my left hand down to the mat here. Now I'm gonna take this right leg here, I'm gonna step this outside. Now this right arm here is going to wrap around my opponent's leg, and it's not gonna be low, it's gonna be high up in the thigh. So here, it wraps. Now notice my posture here. I'm not down like this. This is where I'm gonna get sprawled. Levi can start exactly getting his hips back. It's not fun for me. But what I can do is I can keep my hand wrapped here, keep my back up, posture great, head up, and then my body goes where my head goes. So if I'm looking up here, my body's gonna stay up. And now the last piece of this, which makes it the sweep single, is this leg here is gonna sweep around. So I don't wanna keep it out here because if he were to, you know, jump through and reach for my leg or something here, exactly, he can catch my ankle. Now it's hard for me to finish this. So I wanna get this out of the way. So I'm here, sweep it into here. And now I have this angle on him. We're basically parallel at this point. And now I can start bringing this leg up, drive up, and now there's all sorts of finishes that we'll cover. So one more time, in a great wrestling stance here, nice and low, I'm taking my left hand, getting the mat here, stepping outside, now I wrap my right arm, I keep good posture here the whole time, lock my hands, sweep this leg around, now all I do is I bring this leg in, I drive off of this, and then I drive up, and then I can start attacking the finishes, which we'll go over later. So I drive up, now I'm in great position to finish. All right, so once you have graduated from doing the sweep single with the hand on the mat, I kind of think of it as like training wheels, or I guess your training hand. <laughs> uh, you're gonna do it without that hand, so let me show that next. So we're here, this time I'm not gonna put that hand on the mat. All I'm gonna do is reach for the leg, step to the outside, and do the rest of the sequence. So here's what it looks like. Lock my hands, drive up. Good position. One more time. Now another note about this is you don't always have to just reach with one arm. You can reach with two hands. In fact, it actually makes it faster. So we're here again. I see that light here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out. I'm gonna reach with both. And now I have the lock right away. I'm in good position, good posture, drive up. And then if we turn Levi this way actually, just so you guys can see it on another angle, step out. I reach, notice the posture back here, where my leg is out here, then I drive in, come up. Now, you're usually not going to be shooting sweep singles from the outside like that. A lot of times you're going to have guys who want to club your head or get a tie up with you. So you can use this to your advantage to get the sweep single. So the first one I'll show you is the inside pull. So I'm here with Levi, I have inside tie, where my hands are both inside here. What I can do to get this leg forward so I can sweep it, is I can hold him here with this inside tie, I can pull him. Now notice when I pull, this leg comes forward. Now all I have to do is take that outside step, bring my hand down, and now look what's here. Sleep single, grab hands, Drive up. So one more time. 
inside tie here. I'm going to shuffle to the left and pull this leg forward. Legs there now. Now all I have to do is take this hand, my attacking hand, reach down to this leg for the sweep single, and then do the rest of what I've shown you guys. Now I love this from the inside tie or outside because especially in jujitsu, it works on the big guys, it works on the guys my size, it works on the small guys. So this attack is super efficient and effective. It's just once you, if you don't follow through with it, get all the way out to the side, that's where it becomes difficult and bigger guys can use their weight on you. So again, when you're doing this one more time, it's a quick pull and you want to sweep all the way out. You don't want to end up here, then they turn and face you. Now you get crushed. It sucks. My, my shoulders will tell you all about it. So you want to get here. Get all the way out the way. I'm basically in line with Levi at this point. This is where you want to be. Lock your hands. Drive. Right. So the next setup for the sweep single is my favorite one. These are just fakes. And you can use this for literally any leg attack. It doesn't have to be just the sweep single. It could be the high crotch, the double leg, anything. Um, so this is one people also naturally kind of know. If you've ever been in school and you wanted to scare your friends or mess around with them, you usually look at them and go, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then they usually, well, hopefully flinch, otherwise you look pretty weak. So that's all we're basically doing. We're just doing that in a wrestling stance. So nice and easy, we'll, we'll face this way here. Now what I want to do with fakes is I want to use my lead hand, my attacking hand, to make it look like I'm actually attacking a leg so that he brings it back and then I can go into my sweep single. So the way this looks is there's, there's two variations I have that are very simple. I like to fake to a high crotch so that I can go to that sweep single. So what I mean by that is if we're here, we're nice and tied up, all I'll do is I'll take this lead hand here, I'll take a step like I'm going for the high crotch, but I'm not actually going through with it. So all I'm doing is I'm still changing my level, lifting up this arm here. Now see, he brings his leg back because he doesn't want me to get that leg. Now, when I bring that leg, or he brings that leg back, look where all his weight is. So if it goes back, everything's forward. And for him to regain his balance, he wants to bring it back forward. But in this case, we don't want him to do that. We just want to get to the sweep. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to fit. He brings it back. This leg's here. Now I step and go. One more time. Take, step, sweep. Lock hands, drive up. Uh, we'll do it this way too. So we're here. I face. Now I'm going to sweep. So that's it for faking a high C. Now, there's another way to do this, which is just fake to that sweep single side. So if I'm here, we'll actually go this way first. And this time, we'll have Levi put that leg forward. So you're like, wait, why would I want to fake to the leg when it's already there for me? That's because if he's pretty good, it's gonna be hard to just shoot in without any setup, because he's ready. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step outside like I'm taking the sweep single. I'm gonna fake. So I'm gonna go here. He brings that leg back. Now to regain his balance, he's gonna bring it back forward. Right when he brings it back forward, I go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So one more time here. I fake. Now it comes back forward, then I go. We'll do it uh, side to side here. So we're here. I fake. Go. Then there's all sorts of finishes. One important note on fakes. When I'm here, and we'll go this way again. Uh, let's take this one. When I'm here, and I fake to this leg, I don't rise back up when I fake. I don't go like this. He brings it back. Come up. Because now look, as I come up, he brings that leg back. He can either attack my leg now, or I also can't attack his leg because look how far away I am. So I always want to stay in the pocket. So I think, now there's barely any distance I have to cover, and it's right there. Now you're probably wondering, you know, that's great and all, but how can I actually like finish the takedown? 
So there's a few simple ways. Uh, we'll start off with this one. So I'm here on the inside tie. Now the simplest way you can finish the sweep single is if they try to defend it really quickly and you just absolutely smoke them. So this is what I mean. I pull this leg forward. As I go to sweep, Levi is just gonna sprawl, but I'm just not gonna be there. It's like a magic trick. So I sweep, you sprawl. I'm already out the way. Now I can take the back. Or if I'm here, I can switch arms, grab the other leg, drive in. So one more time. Pull that leg. I sweep, he sprawls, I'm out the way already. I can crawl, kick him back, or I can switch, drive in. Now from here, I can start working out to side control. Now the next leg attack, or, or way to finish this sweep single, is I'm here, I pull Levi. Now what's really important in this one is I control this bar arm. We're going to use this to our advantage. So I'm going to hold this arm tight. His leg's in front for me already. Now from here, I'm going to pull this arm to this leg as I sweep. So I right go here. Now notice how this pulls his body down. And now he has basically no post on the other side. Now from here, I'm just going to hold this leg here, continue to pull him down, and drive him. Now from here, I'm in side control in jiu-jitsu, or in wrestling, he's scared as hell of going to his back, so now he'll fight down, and now I get the takedown. So one more time. I have the leg forward, I'm holding onto this with a vice grip. Shoot to the outside. Now look, he has no post on the far side. I just drive in. Get my back points in wrestling if I can, or get side control in jiu-jitsu. Otherwise, if this guy freaks out and gets down to his belly, that's all right. Now I got my takedown, now I can work for turns on top. All right, so now we're gonna work on some more sweep single finishes. So we've already worked going from here, just inside tie, we'll go this way. Just shooting to this leg here. Uh, this sorry, sorry. Shooting here and just bringing him down and then driving him over. We've done shooting the sweep single, he goes to sprawl, and we're just hard and going. It's magic. Now we're gonna do running the pipe, or the dump is another term for it. To plot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, um, now this person's gonna be defending a bit more, so it's not gonna be as easy to just take them down. So that's where the dump or running the pipe comes in. So I'm here, I shoot the sweep single, I have great position, lock my hands, I drive up. This person's not just falling over. Now once I'm here, Levi's gonna wanna balance on his, on his other leg so that he doesn't just go to the mat, and he's gonna be fighting here. This isn't gonna be an easy position. So running the pipe is very simple. It's kinda like hiking a football. All it is, is I'm gonna take this outside foot. It's always the outside. I'm gonna sweep it around this way. Then I'm gonna shoot my hands down, both of them, down to Levi's ankle. And then I'm gonna use my head, connect it to his leg, and hike it all down to the mat. So here it is. And it all happens at once. It's not a step here, here. You gotta do it all at once. So one more time. I shoot, lock, drive. We're here, we're moving around. I can't hit him down. Now I'm gonna get ready to go, so I'm gonna sweep my leg around. I'm gonna bring both of my hands down to his ankle, and I'm gonna bring my head down to his leg, all at the same time. One more time from another angle. So I'm here, we'll go this way. Here, drive up. Now I'm gonna do the whole thing, all in one motion. So that's the dump for you. Sometimes you can't take a great dump, so you need a backup plan. 
I feel like that was planned. <laughs> <laughs> Popped in like five seconds. That worked really well. <laughs> so, we're here. We're gonna shoot. My lock will come up. Now let's say I try to go for the dump and Levi's just not letting me get it. So I'm here, he just doesn't go down. He's tough. Bring it around the rosy. So, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna bring this leg up into my, my armpit where I have a lot more control. Because the longer we hang out here, the heavier he gets, exactly. He starts breaking my grip, push my head down, it sucks. So, what I'm gonna do here is, notice my hand position right now. I'm still down here on the ankle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my level and bring myself down to, towards this angle, or this ankle here. I'm gonna keep good control of this leg. I'm gonna get this leg out the way, get everything to the outside. Now, I'm gonna really change the level down. This arm's gonna uppercut his leg up, and I'm gonna start securing this in my armpit, here. Now, it's super important that you get this thing very tight here, especially in jiu-jitsu, because in wrestling, it's easier to hold, because of shoes, but in jiu-jitsu, he's barefoot. So if we're both really sweaty, you can just turn and kick out. Exactly, so we don't want that. So we're here, I lower my level, bring the leg up, lock it in my armpit. Now from here, the simplest finish is, uh, I don't really know if we have a name for it in wrestling. I just call it uppercut, uppercut and sweep. So I'll show it from this way, it's a little easier. So I'm gonna take my right arm here, I'm gonna uppercut here. I'm not going like directly under the knee. I like to go a little bit in front of it. So I'm here, I go here. Now when I do this, this raises him up a little bit. It's just what I want because that makes it easier to sweep his foot out from under. So here, I uppercut, and then this right foot, I'm not like kicking him in the leg. I'm just trying to go, I like to go a little bit above the, the heel there and then I just kick it out. Sometimes you won't kick his foot out, that's okay. Just drive in as you do it, and more likely than not, they'll go down. So here it is, full motion, here. Finish the side control. That was not planned, that was a really good one. <laughs> so one more time. I shoot, come up, can't get him down here. I'm trying. Can't get him down. I'm gonna step outside, gather this right into my armpit. Now I'm gonna take this arm here, uppercut, then as I uppercut, I go here. Levi's being nice, making it look cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my takedown. <laughs> so, another one I really like is, uh, I'll go this way. I go here, drive up. We get outside here. Now, sometimes you just can't get the finish here. You try to uppercut, you can't get it, he's just tough. So another really simple one to do from here is, I don't wanna say simple, but it's actually one of my favorite ones. We go into this treetop position. So, the way to do this is, I'm gonna still use this uppercut hand. I'm gonna uppercut here. I'm gonna take this hand. I'm gonna switch it under, here. Now, as I switch it under, I want to close this gap as quickly as I can so he doesn't kick out. So I go here, and now to close the gap, I lock, or not lock, but I put my hands behind my neck here. Now if your partner is super flexible, this is still going to be a fight, but I can tell for Levi, <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> if I stand up all the way and start driving, it's going to be done. So that's perfect. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, come up, start just driving into him, walking him down. Take down. One more time. I shoot. Come up, can't, can't get this. Step out, come up. Now I just can't get this either. It's uppercut, he's up here. I'm gonna go here, dip under, put my hand on my neck here, make this shrink this hole. And now if he's still bouncing with me here, you still have the option of putting your foot behind him, behind his, and then hopping with him as he hops. Take down. Now one more really cool variation of this, and this is how I mostly hit this move, is going to it right away from uh, him defending the dump. So from here, shoot, come up. 
Now, what we're gonna do differently here is, instead of going to our armpit first, we're just gonna skip that. So we're moving around here. Now I'm gonna go for the stump. Can't get it. Now, as I go to step out, and I uppercut here, instead of going here, I'm just gonna finish this. Go right to the treetop. Now it's just the same as we were doing. Knee on belly. All right, you guys, I'm finished. One more time. Sorry about that. It's okay. I'm all stretched out. <laughs> Here, run the pipe, step out, go right to it, take down. All right, so now the next takedown or finish we have from this position, really the last one before we put it all together, is what I like to call the Ayers Club. Uh, Ayers, Chris Ayers was my head coach at Princeton University in college, and he destroyed me with this every other day that I wrestled him. So this is uh, an homage to him. Homage? Homage? Is that his name? Homage. An homage. Sorry, coach. <laughs> yeah, he <messed> it up. <laughs> yeah. That, this is what he gets. That's why he wrestled when I uh, didn't take English classes. Exactly. <laughs> I took those classes and I did not do well at them, so. <laughs> uh, so this time I'm gonna do the same thing. I take a sweep, come here. Now let's say for some reason I just cannot step to the outside here. This guy is just really tough here, or weird or unorthodox, and I somehow end up on the inside. So let's say like he throws his leg outside here. Yep, now what I wanna do is I still wanna get it up into my armpit here so I can secure the leg but I now don't have that uppercut and sweep and all that, that cool stuff. So what I'm gonna do instead is, I'm gonna take this arm, this is my club hand, and I'm going to club Levi from the left here. I'm not, gonna, I'm not punching him in the face, it's more of a forearm hit, or hit, so it's gonna be like that, but on his face. <laughs> and then my right foot here is gonna sweep that way. So basically what I'm doing is I'm folding his upper body this way and his lower body that way. So here's what it is. I get this nice and tight in my armpit. I go here, club this way. Now very important, keep this leg. If you do not keep this leg and he comes out of this, now I've got nowhere. I have no takedown, especially in jiu-jitsu, and he has all the space in the world to play guard. And as wrestlers, we're not fans of entering the guard. We want to get past that. So. Uh, come back up one more time. So I get here. He throws the leg to the outside. I still get this up in my armpit. Now I'm going to take the left arm here. I'm going to club this way. And then my right foot goes here. So that I can fold his body, bring him to the mat, keep the leg, and then try to get to side control. So I go here. Now from here, I can take this foot here. I like to go two hands on it. Push it out. And then step by it. And now there's knee on belly, takes eye control, all sorts of cool stuff from there. Now, last thing we have is just running through the, the full gambit. So you're gonna get guys who block all of the attacks we've gone through, but you can just chain them together to get the takedown. So, an example of that is I'm here, shoot the sweep, I start trying to get the snow up here, can't get it. He's being tough here. I go to step out, I get this, can't get the sweep, I go tree top. Can't get it, he gets his leg back down. Go back to the dump, can't get it. Step out. Now I got it. That's Chain Wrestling 101. Never look to do just one takedown or one move. You gotta think three, four, five moves ahead. Against the best guys, that's how you take them down. And sometimes you only get one opportunity, so. Don't get discouraged if you don't get one of these takedowns. Just try to hit the next thing. And if that doesn't work, hit the next thing. So, continuing with the sweep single stuff, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over times when our opponent sprawls on us when we go for the sweep single, and how to address that and finish the leg attack. So, right here, I get this leg forward because I like to sweep single here. So I'm gonna step out, do all the steps we do here. Now my opponent here is actually gonna sprawl right here. So now once they sprawl and they're facing us a little more, there you go. From here, what we're gonna do is, notice my hand is here, right under Levi. What I wanna do is I actually wanna replace this hand with my elbow. And the reason why is because if I just leave my hand here, 
Levi can circle out right there. Now I've lost it. If we go back here, if I have this hand here and I can get this elbow down, so you see this elbow here, now what I can do is lock him in here and it's a lot harder for him to start circling. And now from here, now I can start circling instead. So I like to circle with the hip down here and I'm not just like way out here, I'm driving in as I circle. This kind of locks his hip out. It makes it easier for me to get around here. Now from here, I can come up, take the back. Or you can do another finish that I actually prefer. But before I get into that, let's just change angles real quick. So we'll do it with uh, Levi's back to the camera here. So I shoot, he sprawls. So right here, I, I don't have him locked in and he can circle out in front of me. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this elbow down. Now from here, we're gonna start running our feet around. We're here. We can come up, take it down. So that's a simple way to address a uh, sprawl is getting that elbow down, circling around, and then you can take the back. But there's something better than just going to the back, especially if this guy is stingy and doesn't want you to take his back. And that's gonna be shelving the leg. So, if we get back to the same position here, I shoot, he sprawls. Let's say I get my elbow down, I circle behind. Now I'm here. So actually, let's turn it off this way. Now I'm here, behind him. Now this guy is gonna be trying to look to wizard and do all that sort of stuff right here. So what we can do, even before he gets this wizard, is we can do this thing called the shelf. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take his leg out here, I'm gonna grab his ankle with my left hand, and then my right hand's gonna stay above this knee. It's very important to stay above the knee because this keeps all my pressure in here, keeps his hip locked out, and it gives me the most leverage to lift this leg up. So now from here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shelf the leg here up on my leg. My leg is the shelf. And then what I like to do is, you see this little space here? I like to close the space. And now, without my hands, I can keep his leg locked in here. That's what I want. So I'm here, keeping pressure in. I have the leg shelved. Now all I need to do is switch hands. So I'm gonna switch here. Now I can take my free hand, reach for his far knee here, or his ankle if you prefer. I like to go far knee. And now all I have to do is drive in. Now from here in Jiu Jitsu, I can start working around to side control here, and that's a wrap. So one more time, we'll do it, uh, yeah, I'll let you do it this way. So here, he sprawls, I circle behind. Now I'm here, let's turn uh, this way a little more. There we go. So we're here, I have my hand above the knee. I'm grabbing his ankle here. All I'm doing is I'm lifting this up, putting it right here on the shelf. My leg is the shelf. I close off this space here, pinch it with my hip and my leg here. Now his foot's stuck. Now from here I take my time, I switch hands, and now I reach with far knee and drive in. Side control. So we'll do the same thing with Levi's back to the camera. So I sweep, he sprawls, I get around. Now this time, let's say my partner has a wizard on me. So this wizard can cause problems because now there's a lot of pressure in, into me and into my shoulder here. What's nice is I can still do this leg shelf where I go here, pick this up, switch, go far knee, drive in. So that's how we address the wizard. Um, but there's another one called the ankle wizard. So we'll do it from down here again, same position. I get here, I circle over here. I get here, my hand's above the knee, but if he goes to this ankle wizard where he grabs his own ankle, there you go. Now I lost the knee. And now you can see my, my flailing hand down here is around his calf. So this is a problem because I don't have a lot of leverage here and there's not much I can do. Like, he's, he just got a ton of pressure on me, and it does not feel good. So, 
How I like to address this is, rather than staying in the fire, I like to come out a little bit and get perpendicular with him. Now you'll notice, when he has his ankle wizard, there's all this space here. What I'm going to do is use that space to my advantage by sneaking my outside knee into that space. So I'm here, I go here. Notice how this elevates his leg up. Now there's more space for me to start coming up to my feet. So now once I'm here, it gets his knee up. I can go up to the knee if I want to. Now I can go back and start working to the finish we just did. Or if he's got that ankle wizard again, and I just can't get back up to this knee, I can just start climbing up here. And now I can start doing all the other finishes we were doing earlier in the instructional. Like the front of the pipe, bringing the leg up, all that fancy stuff. So one more time, we're down here, I'm behind him, he's got this ankle wizard. So I can't get to the knee, there's just too much pressure here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get perpendicular, I'm not going to have my head down in the mat. You've got to still keep good posture here, so I'm going to have my head up. I have this hand here to post, so I can start sliding my knee in. Now from here I can go up to this knee and start working back to that normal finish we were doing, the shelf. Or I can stay here, start driving up. Now we can hang out here on our feet, start looking for front of the pipe, and all those other cool finishes we did. Uh, last note on that ankle wizard position. So we go back here. So we're here. One thing you can do too is if your partner's super heavy on this ankle wizard, right, like that, and you start getting this knee in and coming up, sometimes you can feel all their pressure is going that way. Just limp your arm out and let them fall flat on their face. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I felt that one coming. <laughs> So let's do it one more time. So we're here, I'm behind him. He's got this ankle wizard. I start coming up. Maybe he's got all this pressure that way. Lip out. As you lift your arm out, catch his leg with your other uh, hand. That way, he doesn't escape. Next position is the dog fight. So when we hit sweep singles, one of the big no-nos is to go around the body as you try to finish it. So what do I mean by that? If we have Levi's back to the camera here, I go sweep single, he sprawls. Let's say you're trying to come around, you get this elbow down, you're trying to come around, but instead of staying on the leg, you go up here. Now he's got a wizard. Now we're in this dog fight position, so we can turn this way. Now this dog fight position, the reason it's a no-no is because you have way less advantage in this position than you do if you stay on the leg, shelf it, bring the leg up, all the, that good stuff. So, what can you do from this dogfight position? And you end up here all the time in jiu-jitsu, wrestling, even without a sweep single, so really good stuff to know. So, one thing I really like to do that someone used to do to me in uh, New York City, at the athletic club there, is uh, just a body lock. So, what I can do is I can take this hand, leave it here, I'm gonna take my far hand, I'm gonna reach under, but I'm not gonna stay on my knees here because I don't have a good base like this. So to get a good base and keep my balance, I'm gonna step up. Now from here, I'm gonna take my locked hands, I'm just gonna crunch them in. And now I'm gonna slowly be driving in as I squeeze them in. Now in jiu-jitsu, I'm in side control. In wrestling, he's probably gonna bail so he doesn't go to his back. So one more time, we're in this dog fight position. We're both just here, resisting, not giving each other an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hand, lock in here. This is a very slow, slow and controlled position. Don't rush this, take your time. So I'm squeezing this in, driving it nice and slow. Now I take him to his back in jujitsu, or he'll bail in wrestling, hopefully. <laughs> so right back to that dog fight position. There's another move here called the cow catcher. Uh, I guess it depends where you're from. I'm from Illinois. We call it the cow catcher, I think. I haven't been there in a while. <laughs> um, some people call it the cement job. There's all sorts of stuff. So we're just gonna call it the cow catcher. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna attack the head. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna wrap my arm around his neck here. And now it's very important to use your elbow to bring his head in. Don't just hang your arm out here. 
crunch this in. Now from here, I'm gonna take this arm, I'm gonna go and grab as far as I can up here on the left. Now the last bit of this is I'm gonna take my knee here, I'm gonna bring it up to his chest. Notice how that just knocks him right over. Now from here in wrestling, lift this head up, get your pin, or in jiu-jitsu, you can hang out here. There's all sorts of head and arm chokes, or you can just go to side control. So one more time, we're here. We go uh, seat belt, dog fight position. Let's say you try for the body lock, he's resisting as hard. Now the body lock brings his head in a little more. Now you can go right for this cow catcher. Now from here, I'm not gonna have this leg out. I'm gonna have this one out. I'm gonna reach far for this lat. Now I'm gonna bring my knee in, takes him right over. Now if we go back to dog fight, you can use all of these as setups for the other techniques I'm showing here. So let's say I go for this body lock, can't get it. He brings his head towards me. Now I go cow catcher. He's resisting this. Maybe he starts trying to come up to his feet. Now I can let go of this head, keep my hands here on the hip. I can step in, lock my hands, keep your hips in. So turn this way. Very important to keep these hips in if you're locked around your opponent here because if you go out and he knows any judo stuff, he can throw a leg in there, he can throw his leg across my body. I'm going for a ride. And uh, we don't want the free rides. <laughs> so uh, we're back down into dog fight. I'm here, I'm trying to body lock, can't get it. I go cow catch, can't get it, he's coming up. Now I step in, lock the hands, I lift, and I use my right leg just to help guide his legs up here. So, you don't have to do that body lock, but it's an option, and uh, you guys should watch Kyle Dake. I'll link to it. He has a match where he hits this beautifully, I think, at the World Championships. So, back to the dog fight. We're here, let's say, we try body lock, we try cow catcher, can't get it, maybe we bail on that. Another thing you can do is the limp arm. So what I'm gonna do is, Maybe I'm, I'm trying all this stuff, can't get it. Now there's a little space. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this arm. I'm gonna limp it this way. Now look, that brings his shoulder down. Now I got the back. So one more time. We're here. We're fighting, fighting. He's uh, pushing back into me. Let's go here. Brings him down to the mat. Now I get behind him. You can also do this limp arm as you try to throw a leg in on the far side. This one is riskier, but if you're a longer guy, this might work better for you. I haven't had the, the best success with it because there's always a risk of getting like knocked over as you try to go to that far side, but it's something you guys can mess with. So I'm here, I go to limp, and as I limp on, I get a leg in on the far side. Something to play around with. So the last one I got for you guys in the dog fight, um, there's a variation I I've seen of this, and then Levi actually taught me the other one. So we're here in this dog fight. I'm here. Now this time, uh, you do have the option of coming around and hooking the leg as well. This is kind of our, our sweep single position we were in before, but it might be hard for you to get your arm back down here. So what you can do is, maybe if they start pressuring into you, you can take this far hand, you can reach for this far leg, there's a roll here. I don't recommend this one unless they're really giving you pressure back. That way you can just use that to take them through. So we're here. We're here, he starts driving into me. Roll through there. Or, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> now I see it. <laughs> that one is from uh, behind here, right? Yeah, okay. So this other variation Levi had, which uh, I never really had thought of trying, but I, I like it, is instead of going for that far leg, you go under the near leg, here. So you grab here, lock this in tight, now you just roll through there. That one feels cleaner to me. I feel like it's lower risk, and I don't risk him just falling on top of me if I miss it. Um, so I recommend the one he's, he taught me. 
So we'll do it one more time. I'm here. I go here. Lock this, this leg in place with my leg. Now I take this left arm. I go under here. Grab here. Keep this tight. And now you could even maybe wait for him to push in a little bit. Now I roll through. Yeah, it works so well. Most people are fighting back into that wizard brace drama. Yeah. You just free ride because that wizard gets stuck in there so much. I'm just done. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that's it.